So thank you so much, Joanna, for um, agreeing to come on the podcast of Playing It Safe. And so uh, for those of you who don't know, I have this young lady, Joanna Hernandez, on our call today. And um, I'm just going to let you know something. So what I was doing the other day, I was scrolling to Instagram and I saw like a, you know, international woman's uh, post and mad respect to this lady. So I click on there and it shows like an image of first pregnancy. And I see this lady, she, she has like a mask on. And I'm like, what is she doing? And then I kind of see that she's kind of mid air. And then it goes on to another picture. The film keeps going, shows second, second pregnancy. And then I start realizing this lady is working, um, you know, up in uh, these, you know, she's on a tall beam. She's doing, you know, she's in a field where it's like doing iron work. She's showing all these images where she's helping create these huge buildings. So I was like, I have to interview this woman. This woman is definitely a badass and an inspiration because you never see that. I never see that. So um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in and agreeing to, you know, participate in this podcast. I just think it's really important to let people hear your story and um, just to get a little inspiration. So please uh, tell me, you know, go ahead and introduce yourself and what kind of um, the title of the job you do. And we could just start there. Uh, well, my name is Joanna Hernandez, and I'm an iron worker. I've been in six years now, and I, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting really nervous. <laughs> it's okay. So, what is, what does the, the iron worker do? What 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 do you do in that job? Uh, we do a little bit of everything. Uh, most people think that it's just hard work, you know, iron. It's a little bit of everything. There's iron, there's welding, there's finish work, there's inside work. Um, it uh, it just depends what category is that you like. I know I'm right now, most of the things that I do is welding. Um, uh, right now I'm in a project with, um, it's the Warner Brothers. So we're doing, it's a two-year project. And it's supposed to be a landmark. It's um, it's gonna be a weird building, but we're setting glass, we're lifting, um, carrying. It's 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 fun. That is awesome. So, um, how many years have you been doing this? Six years now. Six years. So, um, let, let let's just go back a little bit to before uh, Joanna became an iron worker, right? So. Uh, tell me a little bit about your uh, upbringing, your childhood. Was like that always going to be your destiny, or what, what? What were you? Yeah, tell um, me a little bit about young Joanna. I think my past has a lot to do with my future. Um, I would say because my mom was a single mom of six kids, oh, wow. so I was the second oldest. So my mom will always be working. Uh, most of the time, we were struggling, so I always felt like I needed to help her. I feel so bad because, you know, most, most of the times I wouldn't spend time with her. So when I turned, I would say 14, 15, I was always hustling a job. I was working at the swamp me. I was working, delivering newspaper. I was always trying to find a way to bring income to the house. Mm -hmm. um, after when I turned 17, um, about to be 18, uh, I couldn't get a job. So I wanted like a better job to help my mom. So I told myself I have to go to school and at least finish my high school so I'm able to help her and provide for my brothers. So after I graduated high school, um, I well, while high school, I did a program called Youth Build. Okay. So I don't know if you're familiar with Youth Build. I am not, but um, please tell me about it. So Youth Build is like a continuation school okay. and they have like a, like a part um, construction program there. So it helps, um, they will pay you, they, not pay you, but like an incentive, mm -hmm. not incentive, but like a stipend. That's what yes. it is. Okay. So you will earn your money. So meaning you had to be always on your best behavior, always come in your uniform on time. So every day you will earn your money, but say you will come late or you wouldn't come in your uniform, they will take away their, your money. So I joined the program. So while I was at school and the program, I was able to get a little bit of income. So I'm able to help my mom and go to school. And after that, uh, school was encouraging me to go to college. They're like, oh, you need to go to college. 
And I told myself, no, I don't want to go to college. I feel like there's something more than just college. Mm-hmm. I mean, college is great. You know, no, I, I agree is powerful. With you. Yeah. But I did not have time for that. I'm like, I need to make money now because, you know, I'm helping my mother. And I had like another goal. So I was just roaming around here and there at a job, warehouse job. Um, and at the end, um, I had a friend that told me about um, Job Corps. Okay. So I joined Job Corps, and then uh, that's when they put me into welding since they saw my background had a little bit of construction because of high school. Mm-hmm. So when I did uh, welding, I was like, you know what? I think this is it. This is what I I love to do. And um, from there, I just I just went off like a rocket ship. Wow. So with, in welding, when you were going through that, uh, was there a lot of um, females in that in those courses or no I was the only girl and if anything everybody was like oh yeah she's weird or what is she doing there like it, it was nothing but men and I was the only female and so when when you were doing the welding what led you to um these big projects that you that you do now uh it was my instructor mm-hmm. uh Carlos Reyes was the teacher there and he told me you know you're really good at welding how come you wouldn't like trying out a because I always thought like oh I'm probably just going to work at a warehouse, you know, fabrication. He's like, no, try uh, iron workers. And I was like, what is that? They're like, oh, he started telling me about the benefits, the the, the pay. I'm like, I want to do this. So I went and I applied. It took me like five months to get in. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of discouraged, but I was like, you know what? You know, what if it's not for me? You know, because when I went to go apply, I was the only female there with a bunch of men. And I'm like, I felt like I didn't belong there. I was like, what am I doing here? That is awesome. Well, Carlos, if you're listening, Meg, that's awesome for encouraging Joanna to go into that field. So um, now that you're doing all these big projects, I saw on one of your posts that your sister does it with you too now. Is that is that right? Or Yes. Yes. She, after a year I was in, she saw the benefits I was getting and the pay that I was getting. She's like, I have to be part of this. And she, at first, she thought that she was not going to make it for the same reason because it's it's tough. It's tough work. Um, the environment, the people sometimes. So she's like, you know, she, she felt like she wasn't going to make it. But honestly, I'm so proud of her. Um, she just graduated her apprenticeship. And now she's pursuing something else. I know she's taking like college classes because um, I believe she wants to be like a contractor. Okay. So she's going beyond. That is awesome. And you open that opportunity for her. Now, yes. what, what obstacles do you face um, in this kind of field? Like what kind of treatment? And you don't have to name names. Don't worry. We're not going to do calls here on everyone. Uh, although I know I'll, I'll find them. No. <laughs> Uh, tell me, um, I'm, I'm assuming this wasn't easy. You know, it, it when you describe um, your background, you know, your mom was a single parent. You struggled, but you say it with such ease, you know, and and trust me, I, I know as, as coming from a single parent household too, um, I know it's not easy, yeah. but what kind of obstacles did you face, whether, you know, in the work field or just um, just trying to pursue something? What, what were your obstacles? Uh, my obstacles, I would say when I got in, it was, you know, I was the only female mm-hmm. and I was working with a bunch of men and there was always a one guy that he will always kind of make me feel less. He will always tell me, what are you doing here? You know, you belong in the kitchen or just comments like that. And sometimes when, you know, I was only what, 21 years old, I was young and I already felt some type of way because I was the only female. So when men will attack me, Sometimes, not all men, I'm not saying all yeah, men. Yeah. I would feel that, like, you know, what if he's right? What if like, you know, what am I doing here? But I just, I, I would always say, why should I just concentrate on one negative comment? When I got all this positive comments telling me that I'm doing, I'm the best, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And I'm like, you know, just ignore them and just continue. And, and just- then another thing too that I've come across I don't usually work with females because it's actually hard to come by females. Yeah. But sometimes you do get another female from another trade or just working with you, not with you, but like in the same job site. Mm -hmm. So you have the same men 
putting tension between me and the other female. Uh, like, like, oh, dude, she's better than you, or oh, look this or that, and and I feel like we should just we should like kind of like, I don't know, uh, ignore that because as it is, we're like only females. If anything, we should be united. We should be helping each other, encouraging each other instead of trying to fight each other. Like, who's better? Wow, that's interesting because that that's a dynamic I think most people don't talk about is that if you're in a male dominated field um, and another woman's in there, they're going to try to pin you against each other as if it's a competition of some sort. And yes, you're like, hey, I'm not competing. You know, there's all you yeah. men. Let's let's make this a competition then. Yeah, men would try to. They already don't want us there as it is, mm-hmm. and I feel like they try to kind of provoke that you know, so we can kind of like fight each other or something. They want some sort of drama, I feel like. So I feel like that's another problem too that I've came across. So far, the only female that I work most jobs is my sister. Mm -hmm. So we're always encouraging each other, pushing each other. And she was the one that told me about posting my video, encouraging me, oh, come on, you know, you'll be a big inspiration to other women. And I was like, I don't know, I'm really scared. I'm scared of the attention or the negative comments but I was like why should I worry about that when I can inspire or or help other women to come and do something because I know there's a lot of um single moms out there just like my mom and you know they want to provide a better life for their kids yeah and it's not just providing you actually enjoy this right oh yes yeah I this I do enjoy and I love and I feel like I would never of I would have not been happy choosing another career or doing something else. That is awesome. So I, I, I got to ask, are you afraid of heights? No, I'm not. <laughs> I I'm asked because I it looks like you're always up like high in the sky. Yeah, at first I was. I'm not going to lie. I did. My feet were shaky. I was like, what am I doing here? But you have to overcome your fears because if you're always living in fear or you're uncomfortable, you're never going to do anything. No, so you got to definitely overcome that. that. <laughs> yes, I definitely agree with that. I would watch you from below and just tell me how safe it is up there. Uh, <laughs> now, um, I have a question. So when you've interviewed for these jobs or you know, as you're going on, has the people who interviewed you like mentioned something like why, like, you know, why are you interested in this? Or like, but in a way where they're just kind of curious what the heck you're doing in their office? No, well they don't interview me there's more like we have a hall so okay. you go and you apply for a job and um so they go by number so if you're like the lowest number then they'll dispatch whatever job is there so you get a job and you go out there and the job site doesn't know if they're getting a male or female you know, they, they don't know that they okay. just know there's a worker coming out there and during my job, I do get men that tell me like, oh, what are you doing here? Or, or like, oh, dude, like, you know, that's badass. You're out here working. So just the job, not like the foreman or like the contractor. Okay. They, they don't, I feel like they don't ask that question because, you know, they don't want to get like a bad response or just, yeah. Know. No, that's cool. So uh, when we were talking before I, I, I started the recording, um, I was asking, you put when you posted up your video, it truly inspired me. And you and you know, um, and I'll I'll share what that what that looked like. And so as I'm showing this really quickly, and for those of you that are coming onto our YouTube channel and want to check it out, you know, this is Joanna's profile page, and she had a video. This is the one I saw where it's just showing her in her first pregnancy, right? And you see her on a on a tall beam, and um, showing her with her second pregnancy and you can tell that she's working really high up and and i'm assuming that's from your phone right your phone camera yes. showing yes my phone and for those of you that are not looking on this video and just listening to the podcast it's um uh, she's very high up in the air right while yes while she's uh pregnant and uh, you know i mean this is beautiful i mean i i love this and i know this is super inspiring to me but i have to ask were you mom shamed? Uh, yes, I was. I did get a lot of bad negative comments and messages saying that I was the worst mom, that I was uh, putting my kids at risk. But who are these people to tell me that? 
my my doctor told me she was she's a female doctor i would tell her what do you think should i just stop working should i just stay home she would tell me if you're fine and you feel good there's no problem with me so i would ask her should i go on disability she's like why would you go on disability you're not disabled you're you know you're just pregnant so she's like, you're at risk. Cause I would tell her, I feel like I'm I'm at risk, you know, for my, with my baby, you know, working at this job. And she would tell me, you're always at risk. You're at risk when you're driving, you're at risk every time you go to the store, you can trip and fall anywhere. That doesn't mean just at your job site. So I, I went on with what my doctor told me. She said, if you're okay and you feel fine, there's no problem with me. Now were the messages from men or women coming to you? Uh, I was mostly women. They were yes. like, they were like, oh yeah, you. What are you doing? You're just putting your babies at risk. Um, they're gonna come out sick. And my babies are the, the healthiest babies ever. And yeah, they were just telling me a lot of negative stuff. But they, I also got positive neg um, comments telling me that I, I'm inspired and. I think that all the negative comments they told me, it just, I, I ignored them. I focused more on the positive. Yeah, because haters are going to hate. Women, stop mom shaming, damn it. Okay. Yeah. You shut your mouth if you got nothing nice to say, because <laughs> I get mom shamed all the time. So, yes, I it, it just blow, it, it blows my mind. Like, we, you know, we're, even if I didn't agree with what you did, which I do, I think it's awesome. I've... I wish I would have had an opportunity like that or even been brave enough to think about something like that. But um, it just blows my mind that people would uh, think that they have the right to give you their opinion about your life. So um, that always that always blows my mind. Yeah. Well, now, Joanna, when you, you're going to have, um, you know, uh, women listening in and, and even men, because this, you know, I know that you are a badass woman, but I think uh, you going for something that is completely non-traditional as far as what society says your role would be, or even in that those fields, um, there's people listening in that maybe want to do something that is completely out of what people think they should be doing or, or thinking it's safe or not. What would you tell people that are listening um, that need that, that, that are coming to you for advice? I would say the first thing is, you, you know, most of the time people want to go for what their parents or their family tell you to do. Mm -hmm. So I think that once you stop believing that, that you should do what your parents or your family or whoever tells you to do, um, I feel like that's, or even stop caring what people think or say of you. That's when you're going to start, I think you're going to start like, living or being yourself. I think that you should go and do what you like. And if you're, if you're, if you're comfortable uh, what you're doing or what, where you're at, then you're not doing anything. You have to be uncomfortable to do something. Mm, so uncomfortable. yes, if you stop caring what people say or think, that's when you're gonna be yourself. That, and, and, and I'm kind of curious, did your mom, when you first started doing this, what was her reaction? Uh, she would tell me, she would always see that I was kind of different and kind of weird. So like, she would always tell me, um, oh, how can you do your hair, or do your makeup, you know, try to dress nice. And I'm like, no, it's okay. I, I'm not into it, whatever. And I always liked doing like uh, men stuff, like working around the house or just doing different stuff and she would tell me oh how come you don't go out with your friends and I, I don't know like I didn't have that in my head you know about like going out or or being you know a regular regular teenage girl so when I told her what I wanted to do she did tell me like oh you know that that's cool but how come you don't do like a social worker or like a, a nurse so I did I'm not gonna lie I did try going for uh, nursing when I was like 18 19 Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't like it. I, I saw so many things at a hospital while I was like, no, this is not for me. Needles, blood and everything. So I told her, at least I tried. She's yeah. like, okay. No, so, that, that's super powerful. Yeah. So my family though, 
like say like uncles and they did think I was a little bit crazy and they think I'm still the crazy one from the family. Me and my sister, they're like, oh yeah, those, those are the crazy girls. <laughs> so, I mean, that's fine. That's okay with me. I, I don't care what they think and I, I love what I do and I did choose a really hard pathway, mm -hmm. but with, with it comes great rewards. I'm able to live a good life give my kids a good life. I was able to help my mom. Now my younger brother is 18. So they're able to provide for themselves. So I was able to help her. And um, I bought my house at 25. Wow. I bought my sec. I have a second mortgage too at 26. Wow. So I'm 27 and I'm going for my third house. So I'm, my goal is to get a house every year. So my first property, I have it rent, rented out. My second home, I have half of it um, rented out and um, I'm going for my third. So I feel like that's the thing that really gets to us, like the rent. Mm -hmm. So I feel like uh, I'm, I, I wanna kind of pursue that too, getting houses and renting them. Um, I do have my husband too. He's the one that's helping me with that. Mm -hmm. So he's a big encouragement, encouragement to me and um, He's, help, he's helping me pretty much. That is incredible. So pretty soon I'll have to interview Joanna again because she's going to be this huge uh, uh, real estate owning all this property, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> which, which is super cool. And, and when you were describing um, what you like to do as far as guy stuff around the house, I just find it funny that we, we have those roles, right? We're told that, you know, oh, um, you know, you should be like in the kitchen instead of, uh, yes. you know, redoing the house or something like that. So that that's encouraging because I have three girls. So, you know, my job, I feel as a mother of women is to not encourage them to only be in the kitchen. If anything, you know, um, try to encourage them to do, you know, let's, let's work. Let's go change the oil of the car. Let's go do all yeah. those things. You, it's not, this is not a man's job. This is your job. You need to learn how to do this to support yourself, to not worry about anyone else. Right. Yeah. So I think you are a true inspiration, Joanna. I totally appreciate you coming out and, and uh, talking with me today. And for anyone that wants to, you know, uh, if you have a question that you really want to ask myself or Joanna, um, please, please, please feel free to email us at playingitsafe 0 at gmail.com or hit us up on Instagram or Facebook. And that way, you know, if you're out there, you, you know, you need some encouragement or if you feel someone else can benefit from this story, maybe you have a friend like Joanna that's struggling, has an inspiration and just needs that extra push, needs to see someone that has done it in, um, it's possible because I think the, the hardest part is that we may have a dream but because we don't see anybody that looks like us in those fields we just automatically like you almost thought right when you're applying you just I guess this yeah. may not be for me I guess that uh, you know you don't see a woman here and you know a woman of color you don't see that here either you know so um that is truly so please feel free reach out if you uh share the story um, let people know, let, let's uh, let people know how badass of a woman uh, Joanna is. And I look forward to seeing more videos, man. You gave me so much encouragement of uh, making me feel like I was lazy. I'm like, Cause he, <laughs> man, this woman's out there. I gotta get my ass in shape and get, keep going, you know, stay focused. So um, stay focused, y'all. Uh, keep up with us. And until the next time, thank you so much, Joanna. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm, I'm really, I really appreciate it. I have no words, you know, to tell you how happy and just be able to inspire other women. And that was, that's the goal. I, that don't, is want, the goal. I don't want it. I don't want people to be like, oh yeah, because you know, this is that, or she's doing it for the likes or that it was never my intention. It's just, I want to inspire it. And like you said, you know, there's somebody out there that wants that push. Well, because and as I would say, Joanna, that the world is filled with millions and millions of people. I think more people need to see your story. I think people, I think that um, there's so many little girls out there that think this is not possible. As much movement and progression we've done, 
you know, I think millions of people need to see your story. So I know you're definitely not doing it for that. And I just appreciate you being here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it for the invitation and everything.